Thanks for dropping into the cast party. Join the cast and crew as they are deposited from their Hollywood film set into the crazy world of Dungeons and Dragons. And action! Ah, Option, how are you this evening? Oh, uh, what up, Claude Daddy? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm quite good. I always enjoy flying over the various fen forests. There's more than just the witch fen? Well, of course! The forest covers a great deal of Fendrea. There's the witch fen forest, the were fen forest, the wen fen forest, the witch wen fen, and the were wen fen, and the were witch wen fen. Oh, whoa, whoa. The, the when, where, what? No, no, the when, where, fen, not the when, where, what? No, I mean, like, you you just said a lot right there. Where? Here. No, I believe here is the when, fen. When, fen? Where? Over there, fen. There, fen? Which fen is that? No, we're on our way past the witch fen. No, I know that. Which of the fens are we above? Oh, the when, where, fen. And over there is the when, fen. I don't see it. Where fen? Once again, option? No, that's the when fen. My head hurts. Which when fen is this? When where fen? Where which when fen? The which fen is south of the which when fen, which is west of the when fen, and north of the where which when fen, which is bordered by the when where fen, which lies north of the where fen. Currently, we're above the when fen. Right. Okay. So, what fen? I don't believe there is a wet fen. I think I'm gonna cry. Hey, Claude, where's the witch fen and when are we going by it? I wanna see. Where witch fen and when? I'm sorry, option. Did you say the where witch when fen? I can't deal with this again. Wanna listen along to this episode with all of us, including the wonderful Luis Carrazo? We've got Luis for two more episodes, so how about you join us for a live listen? Or maybe you're looking for some ad-free episodes, exclusive behind-the-scenes info, or maybe some hilarious monthly one-shots. Whatever you're looking for, hop on over to patreon.com slash castparty right now and join the greatest community this side of the TTRPG world. Over on our Discord, we host live listening parties with all of us for every single Cast Party episode, community-driven game nights, live streams, hangouts, and so much more. Patreon.com slash castparty. We hope to see you there. Thank you all so much for listening. Enjoy the episode, cast and crew. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cast Party. My name is Colin McManus, and I will be your director for today. I am joined by my sinking cast and crew, Ryan McManus. Hi, Sebastian Vivaldi Greensleeves, an emo at heart musician whose favorite guilty pleasure book, I promise this isn't an ad, I just Googled the most emo book I could find, is Vampire Kisses by Ellen Schrieber <laughs> about a girl named Raven who can't think of anything worse than spending another day in her hometown. She would say it's boring as hell, but hell is probably more exciting when sleek and secretive Alexander Sterling, who Sebastian pretends to be while reading the book, moves into the <laughs> mansion rumored to be haunted across the street. Raven has to find out exactly what is going on. The Sterlings aren't exactly your average family, and there might be more to the whispers around town than just rumors. Besides, this might be Raven's chance to get the vampire kiss she's been dying for. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Anna Brisbane. <laughs> Blueberry Sky, elven druid actress saving the world through art, whose first pet was a dwarf hamster when she was five. Her parents asked what she wanted to name it, and she said Blueberry. And of course they were like, no, honey, that's your name. How about Bertie? And her parents tried for a full year to call the hamster Bertie, but Blue refused to call her anything but Blueberry. And it caused quite the stir on set one day when she was seven and the hamster died. And she met everyone utterly distraught. And when anyone asked what was wrong, she insisted that Blueberry died and refused to explain oh, herself shit. further. No. <laughs> that's so sad. Oh my God. It says Blueberry dies, refuses to allow. <laughs> Nigel Deacon. K Pa Xander Gucci Supreme, who, as you all saw in the last episode or heard, uh, is a master craftsman when it comes to sewing and textiles. He told the party that it was because he had to learn to do that 
to keep his Gucci fresh, but truthfully, after his parents disowned him and cut off his money supply, he didn't have the luxury of being able to buy new clothes every time something happened. So yes, it was something he would do for his Gucci garments, but he was doing it for the dollar store shirts and lost and found jeans as well. And as frugal as that sounds, with the recent shift in the fashion industry to the look of DIY and pre-destructed clothes, he was truly balling on a budget. <laughs> That's so Xander. Pretty accurate, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have Vince Perino. Hello, Vincent Perino. I play Jet the Boulder Chambers, and I will be giving the very requested, very sought after story of how Jet got his Tesla. Here he is, driving around in his 1999 white Honda Civic. It had 200,000 miles on it. It was kind of putzing around a little bit. And he gets on the highway and he sees this nice, beautiful white Tesla drive by him and he goes, huh, that's cool. So he went to the Tesla store and bought one the next week. And that is the story of how he got a Tesla. A tale for the ages. Can you cite your sources on who was asking for that story? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll give that to you and, uh, you know, when I can get to it. And of course, we have a very special guest, Luis Carrazzo, joining us today, whose character you will meet shortly. But let's just get right into it, talk about what happened last time. Last time, you began inside the old Arcanum base with Ermina magically coming down from the balcony to speak with you. She told you of her clone, offered you some wine, she sat with her buff dragonborn, and she showed you a pool in the center of the room where she could use visions to seek out those who she had met before. During this time, Blueberry had a vision of a white tree in a tower coming out of a blackened floor, a knot hole in the center with star-like lights. As the vision continued, the branches deteriorated, and with each branch, another light went out. You all continued speaking with Ermina. She tried prying information out of you, but she was unsuccessful, dropping the name Volazar. She ignited her hands in flames and attacked. Her servants tried to take hold of you as Ermina blasted spells at you from either side of the room, nearly disintegrating both Jet and Blueberry. She was felled by Xander, grabbing at her neck with a magic touch, sucking her soul from her body. Xander grabbed her amulet, and after a brief chat between Jet and Xander about his actions, you headed deeper into the Arcanum base. Finding abandoned rooms of all kinds, you stumbled upon a black obsidian doorway where Xander entered. He found a stone table carved with a topographic map of Pandrea, as well as an ornate wooden box upon a pedestal. Opening the box, Xander revealed a book. After taking it, an eye manifested itself on the inside of the box. Stabbing at it turned out to be an illusion, though it made direct eye contact with Xander. Reading through Alana's journal, Xander found much about how she was hunting for her other half. It must be destroyed before Shar would accept her. There was much more information in the journal along with knowing the existence of the Lost Plane. The map of Fendrea taught you much about the planes, the cosmic winds that move them, as well as how many connections there are between the different planes of existence. You also found a book of old Arcanum notes from one Ilionas Thorell, and it had old Arcanum notes on different locations in Fendrea and the likelihood of partnership with each. You left the Arcanum base, had a sad moment with Tila giving her fox's necklace, and headed back to the airship. The next travel was long. Jet's transformation continued, his tail grew longer, his face now a harsh white, and scales growing along his back shoulder. You spoke a bit about the memories Jet has seen in the mists. He decided to go up onto the deck of the ship and try to reach out for his mother. When doing so, holding onto the necklace, the large platinum dragon was flying behind the airship and loudly roared. Jet yelling at it, amulet burning his hand. It roared again and dove beneath the clouds, along with seven golden dragons that circled the airship. Jet's amulet glowed with the profile of a dragon head once again. This time, it stayed. Later that night, Xander was awoken by a whisper, saying Blightmore. He went to the deck of the ship and listened hard as a large wooden arrow crashed through the airship and it started to fall. Sebastian was able to dimension door Blueberry out from beneath the airship, but still over water. She wild shaped into a giant eagle and grabbed him. Jet tried to save Xander, but was unable to get out of the airship in time as it crashed into the water. Now, Jet and Xander are badly hurt inside the airship as it begins to flood with water. You can no longer hear Cloud as the water engulfs the airship. From the forest, you hear the voice of someone. And so the scene is set. The question is, who is coming out of the forest? 
Luis, would you like to introduce your character? What you see emerging from the forest is a five foot ten, partially human, partially elven in appearance, if you're looking very closely, half elf. A man who is sure footed, who seems to know the nuances of the land that he's stepping on as he strides forth, as if he's almost so familiar with it, he's almost one with it. In his hands, a long bow, he immediately pulls out an arrow from his quiver as he approaches what he thinks is the wreckage of this airship that just fell. You open up onto this scene, you're pushing through the edge of this forest, it's dark. The murky waters below are reflecting light from the three giant Fendrean moons. You see this giant eagle. It's holding a man and flying towards a crashed airship. There are still these massive ripples in the water from where it impacted. Large chunks of debris fill the water. Broken down wooden shrapnel, remnants of beds, and other living items have been thrown about as the boat has split in two. From where you are, you can see a large air elemental still on the deck of this ship. You can see even from here the panic on its face as it's looking around, and you can see it turns into a large wispy bird made from air and flies off the boat towards the shore, towards you. The water surges into the ship from the breaks in the hull. The ship is about 150 or so feet off shore. I'm going to cut to the side. I'm going to swing right out of the traje what I think is a trajectory of the elemental, and I'm going to start to approach, but with a little bit of a swing towards the right. And I definitely am approaching with my bow and my arrow notched, ready for action if it comes. I don't know what that eagle's doing with that person. Blueberry, what are you doing? Mm, if the boat is 150 from coast, how far am I from coast? We'll say 150 feet. And you can see there is a man on the coast. You heard them yell out before. This time, you can see the longbow out and an arrow knocked. That's not the one who shot the ship, right? Sebastian, I can only carry two of you. I can't. Uh, do I drop you off? Uh, yeah, just just get me to shore and then run back out, I guess. Yeah, I'm dashing to the shore and I'm, I'm going to drop him like 20 feet from shore. I can swim. It's okay. And at this point, just to your west now is this wispy air elemental bird that has perched in one of these trees, and you can see it almost has a face, and it almost looks like it's surprised. To your east now, you can see a giant eagle dropping a human man who has a guitar on his back into the water, coming very close to where you are. To me, I wasn't sure if that eagle was gonna try to eat him or or what, but if I, if I noticed that the eagle dropped him in a way that wasn't aggressive, then that's that's... A point of interest for me. I'm going to head towards the man. I feel like Blueberry was pretty dang quick about it and probably just plunged me into the ocean and yeah. then swooped towards the wreckage. Just psh, turn back around. Yeah. So I'm definitely like huffing and swimming, trying my best to wade through the waves and get to the shore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, rather than a greeting, then I'm coming to save you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Let's quickly jump inside the ship. Chet and Xander, you have just been knocked around by this impact. You are both still conscious, but right now water is flooding in to the now overturned wreck area where you eat and hang out. Jet, you can see that Xander got knocked away from you as you tried to get to him. He got hit by the large dining table that was here. He is now trapped behind it with his abdomen bleeding profusely, the water already up to his waist. Jet, you look down and you see a large piece of shrapnel from one of the walls has punctured the lower portion of your right leg. You can barely feel your foot. Uh, Xander! Xander! Oh, shit. I'm I'm okay. I, I think. Buddy, we got to get out of here. P Pebbles! Are you there? Girl! You reach out to Pebbles, and you don't feel her. Shit. All right, buddy. Uh, I'm coming. I gotta, I'm coming to you. All right, I'm, I'm gonna reach down and I'll, I'll try to pull this out of my leg as, as quick as I can. You're able to pull it out, but damn, it hurts. Jet, your speed is currently reduced by 15. Fuck, shit, Xander, all right. Uh, you good, bud? I'm coming. 
for for a moment, it's something that Xander's not even thinking about, but he knows it's dark, and I'm going to cast Hollow with daylight so that it at least is like light around us so that we can see and get out of there and maybe like attract the attention of anyone outside to try and get help. From the shore, Sebastian, you see this half-elven man and both of you can see this large light coming from inside the airship as it's sinking deeper and deeper. Are you okay? Ugh, I'm not the biggest fan of the ocean. Can you help? Oh, all right. So I'm going to stow my, my longbow and I'm going to jump into the water. And if I need to swim to him, I'm going to swim to him. It's more like trudging through the start of the ocean. It's dark. It's a little bit slimy here, but you're able to get to him, pick him up. Blueberry, you just get over top of the ship. You can see from where you are that, yes, there's still like an opening down in. You can see it's bright there. You can even see from where you are, Jet is getting up from a more like kneeled down position. But Xander is pushed against this table and the water is up to his chest at this point. Diving down to yank the table. And I try and push it from where I am too. Grab with talons and fly backward, pull it off. One of you can give me an athletics check. Because of the water here, it would have been with disadvantage, so you are getting help from the other. I'll do it. I feel like I'm doing most of it. Oh, not wonderful, 11. I'm gonna try to rip up the table with my talents. Just straight up roll me damage for whatever you can do in one round. Can I help with that too? With like some Eldritch Blasts? 15? Oh, I have multi-attack. I can use my beak too. I'll try to just wade through the water and kind of lip my way over to help out. Your speed's reduced by 15. This is difficult terrain. You are moving extremely slowly. You can feel the rushes of this water. Sometimes you even start losing your footing completely, but you are able to get over to that table. Blueberry, what was the extra damage as well as Xander? Also six piercing from my beak. Nine plus 13. So 22 damage from my Eldritch Blast. This table was heavy, made of oak. It was the heaviest thing that was on this airship. You're able to break it right in half. Xander, you're quickly noticing you can't stand anymore. You are now floating as the water is pulling you down as the rest of the ship continues downward. Can we see the sky? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see the sky ahead of you. It's where Blueberry came in from. So I'm just going to take one talon grab Xander and fly towards Jet. Oh, this is me, by the way. I think you can tell, but it's, it's Blueberry. Yeah, you got the color scheme. Yeah. Don't worry. I recognize aesthetics. Seeing her fly towards me, I'll just throw an arm up like in a hook while I'm on my knees uh, waiting for her to come grab me. You are like being actively pulled down, but Blueberry, you are able to grab him head off to the shore. Sebastian, you have this half-elven man who has just brought you Onto the shore where you can sit down and you can see that there is a wispy air bird here, as well as Blueberry as an eagle is flying towards you with Jet and Xander in tow as you see the rest of the airship. And you can hear those big waves start to come as all of that air fills the space it was in. Huffing and puffing and like coughing up water. And I take Daisy around and I'm shaking the water out of the hole and I look up at the half-elven man. <laughs> you didn't shoot us down, did you? No, I did not. How many survivors? How many, how many others? As I point to the sinking ship, how many did you lose? I, I look back and see Eagle Blueberry with two people in their claws. <laughs> it, it looks like everyone made it out. It was, it was just us on there. I don't know how, but damn. Thank you for helping me. Well, you are one lucky son of a bitch, I'll tell you that. Let's get you to your friends. I offer to help carry you, so I kind of gesture so that you can put your arm around my shoulder and I can help you forward. Yeah, Sebastian's a small guy. He's like 5'6". He'll, he'll take any help he can get. Your name? S Sebastian. Lobos. Lobos. Th thank you. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You had one hell of a ride, huh? Yeah, not the best circumstance to meet someone, but hey, we're both alive, so that's cool. No idea what knocked you out of the sky? Uh, I thought it was a big ballista. 
arrow, something. It popped the air sac on the, the airship. So we just went down. We took one to the hull and one to the air sac, and then I don't know where it came from. It was kind of shocking. There's no, like, towns or anything around here that would have done this? No. There is a town nearby, but last time I was there, they weren't doing anything like this. On the flyback, I definitely want to look behind me and at the ship, and first of all, at the skies to see if there's any hint of the source that shot us. The only thing that looks odd here is the half-elven man at the shore, as well as these trees around this forest definitely look odd. The trees are odd. Okay. <laughs> Where's Claude? Did you guys see Claude? Uh, no, I, I haven't seen much of anything except exploding wood and water for the last 30 seconds. I haven't seen anything at all. Swooping down. You do all see that there is a bird here that is wispily made of air, and it seems to have the face of Claude. Ah! Options? Claude, you're a bird too? Yes, I I actually haven't had to do this in about a century or so. I'm sorry, I'm glad you can though. Are you okay? I'm not harmed. I'm sorry I failed you. What? No, we were attacked. That's not your fault. Sorry we directed you towards an attack. And you can see they fly up into a nearby branch and they look out upon where the airship was. <sighs> looking at this other man, looking at this bow, looking at the ship. We're hobbling up. Uh, guys, this dude saved me. His his name's Lobos. I'm gonna approach them and start to like get a read, scrutinize the damage on each of you and the two that are wounded. I'm gonna turn to Sebastian. Oh, it looks like there's a couple of you that are in worse shape than you are. And I'm gonna move away from you and I'm gonna start to approach to who's the who's the person in the worst shape? Probably me. I think I got half health by that crash. All right, I'm gonna approach you. Are you okay? What, what what happened to you? Uh, well, I ended up pinned by a table. Can't say it's the first time. Hopefully it's the last. Um, you know, I've been in enough bar fights where things get rowdy with the pool table, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're, you're doing fine. I see if you've maintained your sense of humor, <laughs> I think you're okay. I give him a good, like, hard pat on the chest. I'll run over to Blueberry and Jet. Oh, good job getting them, Blueberry. Uh, Jet, do you need any help? I, I don't know if I can walk right now, man. Look at this thing. I turn to see the, like, wound on the leg and I get distracted. Immediately, you see his eyes kind of go wide as he looks at the two of you. You're not in good shape. You need help. We need to get you to somebody that can help you a lot more than I can. Unless one of you here can do something about these wounds, then we need to get moving to the nearby village. Do you know anybody there that can do something with this? The nearest town is Umberdale. It's where I'm from. I'm on my way there. Fortune has it that we would be in the same vicinity at the same time. So, yes, I, I, I can help you get there. How do I know I can trust you? I just met you. You don't. How often can you trust a stranger that you meet in the forest? Jet, he threw himself into the ocean to come help me. I think that says a lot. I'm sitting down. And I'll just kind of look up at him and give him a nod. All right. Giant Eagle is going to turn back into an elf. Okay. Ah, uh, Jesus. All right. Um, come here. Come here. I'm going to go up to the, the leg and just uh, druidcraft some salves and cast Cure Wounds second level. Lobo says you're kind of watching this magic happen. You're very used to keeping your eyes on the forest. From the shoreline where you guys are, you can see that further into the forest, there are different flames coming towards you. They look to be torches or at least similar in size. And as you're listening, you can hear like loud footsteps as well as what sounds like axes hitting trees. The occasional large tree branch falling onto the ground loudly. It sounds like some sort of group of people is coming towards you. Okay, listen, everybody, uh, we need to get you patched up and we are likely going to encounter some 
some people from Umberdale, let me do the talking. They're going to want to know what you were doing on that airship and why it crashed. Which, if you could give me any of that information before they come and start asking questions, that would be amazing. We've been using that thing just to get from place to place. We were on our way to Helios. I was looking at the moon. All of a sudden, it hit us. It came from below us. Xander kind of like stops talking for a second and you can kind of see the gears turning and like short circuiting a little. Is there, there might have been a ship or something that shot us down. It came from directly below us. Like that was, we were over the water. Hmm. I, I'll be honest, we don't know you that well, but we're kind of in a, we're kind of in a bad spot. We're not in a good place with the magistrate. Just going to lay that out on the line right now. And as much as we want your help, we don't want, I don't want to risk you being involved with us. What do you mean you're not in a good place with the Magistrate? I'm telling you, as these torches start coming closer to us, the more you tell me now, the more I'm going to be able to help you. Well, we're like public enemy number one to the Magistrate <laughs> right now. Oh, no. Way to make us sound suspicious, Xander. I'm just, we're... I start to step back as soon as he admits that. It's it's not as bad as, as he made it out to sound. Um, we're a little bit a part of the the, the revolution uh, going on. Uh, I don't know if that's worse. Uh, so, can, all right, okay, let's let's try this again. I, like I don't want to bleed out on this beach alone, but um, we're trying to stop the magistrate from doing the bad things that they're doing to the people of Fendrea. He takes that in and starts to look at each one of you. You see him looking you up and down, but this time with a different kind of assessment. Before it was gauging your wounds, your distress. Now he's looking you up and down, trying to get a sense of who you really are. So we have your healer here, I see. What do the rest of you do? Um, I can shoot things with with magic hands. Show him your little buddy, man. Oh god, is, is Nomura around? Did he get tossed around in the ship? I'll just kind of like wave my hand around because uh, I don't know where he is and he just appears on my shoulder. Little like goblin creature. And I didn't get your name. My bad. I'm Xander. It's a pleasure to meet you, Lobos. Xander, Sebastian, and to the other man, your name. Uh, Jet. Name's Jet. And what are you wearing? What do I see on your person? Jet is wearing full plate mail, yeah. With a tail hole cut out. <laughs> in the back, yes. <laughs> and your name once again? Uh, Blueberry. Listen, I know a group of mercenaries when I see them. You seem capable, even though you are a little beaten up right now. Not just anybody is going to be flying an airship. So there's more to you than you uh, have time to tell me right now. But you're in luck because Umberdale needs people just like you. You are here on my behalf, is what we're going to tell them. Okay. 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 You were to meet me here because they need help. Halt! Identify yourselves! Before they get closer, I look over at Xander and I whisper, We look like mercenaries. Dude, I don't know. We found the airship. We're not capable. We're lucky. I was more talking about your shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah relax. Do I recognize the voice? You've been gone. I've been gone for a long time. You don't recognize the voice immediately. Coming from the forest edge, you can see a male half-elf exit past the brush. The rest of the flames that look like torches sit just behind the brush, illuminating angry faces of mostly half-elven men and women. There are, of course, other races here, many dwarves and dragonborn particularly. They're all wearing these long sleeve, bright white shirts underneath whatever else they are wearing surprisingly visible even in the darkness. The man who is speaking to you has dark hair with a mix of light brown, though almost giving him a salt and peppery look. Immediately, the four of you who aren't Lobos see something odd. The plant life here is nothing like what you're used to. First, the color's off. The trees that look to be sturdy generally have largely curved trunks of a pinkish orange. The other type of tree, you want to call it a tree, though it looks more like a giant piece of ground cover. 
huge plants with large azure and teal leaves, bigger than beach umbrellas, the stalks as thick as Jet's bicep. You can see the man holding the torch has an axe by his side, just like many of the others behind the tree line. You can see the handles are made from the pink orange wood of the odd trees around. And Lobos, as you see him, you do recognize this man, much older than the last time you saw him. His name is Rylar. As soon as the recognition washes over my face, I soften. Rylar, is that you? Lada, it's Lobos. From above in one of these trees, you can see movement as a half-elven woman jumps down with short bow in hand. She's not wearing the bright white like the others are. She looks like she's camouflaged. She walks right up to you, Lobos. Well, I thought you dead. Gives you a quick one-armed hug as she holds her short bow in her other hand. I very warmly return it. Ah, you're not going to get rid of me that easily, even after so many years. Listen, these are my friends. We were all on this airship and we were struck down. We heard the call for help, and I was given leave to return home to offer some assistance. And I've come with four very capable friends that are here to offer help as well. In the back, you hear Xander go, oh, I ripped my shirt. Don't mind their dress. They are uh, from other places with unusual customs. She then looks at the people behind her. Keep your eyes open. We aren't far in, but we are in the forest. It's dangerous at night. What could have shot us down? Something over the water? Shooting us from below? Uh, what? Nothing from Umberdale. We did not expect airships ever around these parts. You survived all those years away, and then you come crashing down from the sky. Well, that's a way to make an entrance, isn't it? I must warn you, you and them may not be welcomed. Not with that entrance. Bringing a magic ship and letting it fall from the sky, you know they don't appreciate it here. I know. I will speak to them and make our case. We had supplies on that ship. There was no other way to get them here as fast as you need them. And all that's gone. All you have is us. But as you can see, some of us need a little bit of taking care of. Do you have anything on you that can help alleviate some of their wounds? If they can walk, we can get them to the city. Jet, do you feel like you can walk on this better now? I think I can, yeah. I, I don't want to be on it long. We can get them assistance, but the Kataval will want to see you. And Lobos, this is an interesting name. You don't know what the Kataval is. I at first nod as if I know what she's talking about, and then I try to rack my brain, and as nothing comes back, I finally give in to the truth of my ignorance. Forgive me, Lada, I've been gone for a long time. What was that that you just said? A what? Kataval. What is a Kataval? Edlis, your father. The council is no more. You have to speak with him. What do you mean? They are gone. But he's here. How could they be gone and he remain? He blames himself daily for it. It may be best you hear it from him. We should get behind the city walls. We should. Let me remind my companions of what this forest is capable of at night. We'll be right behind you. And I'm going to fall back. How are you all faring? That could have gone worse, right? It could have. It didn't go as well as I hoped, but you're lucky you have me, that's for sure. They would not have been kind to you otherwise. Yeah, you're, you're probably not wrong about that. You tell no one else what you just told me. Do not utter any mention of the Magistrate. You are friends of mine. You've come here with me. We were sponsored by some benefactor from where, wherever you're from. We'll have to fill in the blanks on that because they're going to wonder how we got our hands on an airship. By the way, how did you get your hands on an airship? We found it. You found it. I know that's a, it's a very weird answer, but it's true. It legit just was like there and we're like, okay. Great. Um, all right. Let me incorporate that into the uh, lie that I'm weaving on your behalf. You found an airship. Just stumbled upon it. Great. That makes you valuable. Um, they'll never know what was on that airship. It had supplies. Umberdale, my hometown. 
and I, I, I start to gesture towards the forest. As far back as I remember, this forest, this is called the Witchfen Forest. This forest has some kind of magical properties to it. We have constantly had to cut it back as it's, and I, I start to point out if I can see and if I can show them growth as it's happening in real time, I'm going to bring that to their attention. I point it out to you so you see this vine that's growing. I've been far and wide. I've left this place long ago. One of the things that I took for granted being a native of this area was that this forest, this growth was was just the way things were. We knew it was unusual. We knew we had to fight it back. It was part of the everyday tasks of the city. I've traveled and I know that this is not normal and it's gotten worse. And Umberdale has sent out a call for help. That's the reason why I've come home after so long. The only thing that would bring me back was their desperate need for a helping hand. And that's why you're here. The plants are a danger? That has yet to be determined. But they are spreading rapidly, faster now than ever before. And their properties that maybe you might be able to know something about? As we continue walking behind the rest of the group, I'll take Blueberry. I'll find one of those vines that's growing rapidly. What does this tell you? What does this mean to you if it means anything at all? I want a nature roll. Mm -hmm. That's not the end of a sentence. It's not, but I, I want to hear the answer <laughs> to the nature roll first. 15. Okay, with a 15, give me an arcana roll. Fuck. <laughs> 10. Is the vine like actively growing right there? Blueberry, from your nature check, you can see that these have similar plant-like qualities to when you were in the ship outside of Duford. Whoa. Oh. The basement of that ship where you fought the hag was filled with unnatural oh. plant life. Oh, no. These are not the same plants, but... Similar. Similar. For druid craft, I can instantly make a flower blossom seed pod open or a leaf bud bloom. Do I have any control over these if I try to druid craft them to make any of those things happen? Uh, if I can find a budding leaf and have it grow more instantly, I don't know if there are any flower buds or... Some of these vines have what look to be like the start of flower buds. As you try to get it to blossom, it opens, but instead of revealing like a pretty flower, it drops a seed onto the ground. In real time, you can see that seed digs itself into the soil. Like little spindles from that seed come out and go into the soil, like roots. I would like to have my camera out while this is happening so I can like document this. I don't like these plants. <laughs> As they're doing this, Jet, you hear something land behind you. I'll look back. It's Claude. Option, um, where should I go? Claude, what, where have you been? I've just been following along, but I don't think I should do that. I'm not fit for this. You're with us now. How many forms can you take? Very few. How far can you fly like that? To the ends of Fendrea. I think you should go to Helios and wait for us there. That's exactly what I was going to say. I think you'd fit right in. Home. I haven't been back in 80 years. Are you going to be okay without us? I know how to get there. Do you know how to take care of yourself without us? It's been a while. I was fine for 70 years. And you can do whatever you want while you wait for us. You, you can make choices for yourself there. You don't have to just only do things that we tell you to. Maybe they'll have another airship for me to work on. Maybe. And another deck of cards. Oh no. The cards. I know. Thank you, options. I will see you shortly. 
Thank you. We'll see you soon, bud. We'll miss you, friend. The wispy air bird flies up and then to the west. I want to kind of like mention to Lobos, like as we're walking, like, I'm not going to look at this as like a, as like a blessing in disguise because I'm bleeding from my stomach and that sucks. But, um, we were kind of going to come here anyway at some point. And I may have some questions later on about some things that are happening to me. Uh, like my body's going through changes and like I'm confused about everything that's happening. And this is where we were directed to go to learn more. That sounds like I was talking about puberty. I'm not talking about puberty. I'm this is I'm doing it. I, I'll, t- I'll talk to you about it later, but just know that I think there's some otherworldly force that's also drawing us here, not just a giant arrow. What sorts of not puberty related changes are you going through? And I'll make sure like the others aren't looking and I'll like undo my disguised self on my hand and he'll see the dark purpleness of my entire arm. Ooh. Yeah, this just happened. There's a lot that led up to it, but I was not always like this. It has to do with a dagger and I'm hearing the word blight more. Okay. Yeah, there's a whole bunch that's going into it, and, like, on this walk, it's probably not the best time to talk about it, but I just wanted to let you know, you know, that's something we're keeping an eye out for. Two things. Does any of that mean anything to me? Am I recognizing any of what's happening to his skin? Give me nature. My nature check is a 27. Jeez. Holy! Ooh. This looks like an influence from some other plane. It does not look like Fendrean influence in any way. The second thing that I'm curious about is when, when, when Xander was hiding, when he was being discreet, am I able to determine whether he was hiding it from the other people from Umberdale, or was he hiding it from his companions as well? Xander, go ahead and describe how you were doing that. I was hiding it before we knew the people were there. That is true. When you saw him come off the ship, his hands looked normal. In addition to the other secrets that I've suggested you keep, this is another thing to keep to yourself. You got it, boss. Do your friends know? Oh, yeah, they, they, well, they saw it happen, but I think they think it's more of like a in the moment kind of thing. Like when things get heated, we're, we're about to fight or we're like trying to survive or something, then it comes out. It's like a passion thing. But this is kind of, this seems to be permanent. And they don't know that. Yeah, no, I, I've been able to, to just kind of mask it so that it seems more like it's coming out when it's emotion or passion or fights or whatever so you are hiding a little something from your friends and you are being completely upfront with someone that you met just moments ago yeah because we need answers and i don't want them to worry there's been a lot going on and you're from this place i figured you'd be a good place to start i know what it's like to be in your shoes that's for sure and I'm going to look at the other three. I just kind of, I don't know. They, this group is becoming more and more curious to me by the second. Which one of your three friends would you trust the most? Ooh. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> oh yo. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm probably the closest to Sebastian. We, we work together. Uh, he's the sound guy. I was the camera guy. And like, we, we've been like right next to each other the whole movie. So I think, I think it's gotta be him. Huh. And gives you a pat on the shoulder and says, yeah, you should keep that to yourself too. Okay. I'm going to move away and I'm going to start to catch up to Lada. You can see those flames a little bit further into distance. They've been continuing on. Heading through this bit of forest, you can hear the people around you. They're slashing at branches, sometimes even felling whole trees as they're moving back through your, the forest until you come upon a clearing. It completely encircles the walls of a village to your east. The walls are made of large wooden spires 20 feet tall, the same pinkish orange of the trees. The clearing has to be a thousand feet, if not more, all around the walls. In the clearing are leftover stumps and broken down vines and leaves. They sit everywhere around, but many of what was left has been hauled out. About a thousand feet ahead of you, you can see the opening to the wooden gate. 
And Lobos, especially as you're coming up, Lada has waited at this clearing for you. She comes up next to you. A lot further than we used to have to go. Remember? I'm not sure if I remember anything as accurately as I once thought, but yes, I, I, I seem to recall it not requiring this much effort. Forest moves quicker every day. We need more people just to keep it tame. I understand. Lada, um, I need you. Everyone else is going to look at me and regard me with suspicion, and I can feel in your heart that it's as if no time has passed. I'm going to need you to back me up. You've been gone a long time. I can't guarantee that for you. Things change. Things do change. But people don't. I'll have to see that for myself. And starts heading towards Umberdale. I kind of let her get ahead of me and walk by myself for a couple minutes. Entering Umberdale, you can see much of the buildings are made from these pink-orange woods. They use the stalks of the blue trees as accents to decorate the various buildings. There are many leaf roofs here you can see as well. Lobos, you are recognizing that Umberdale has grown bigger in the time you've been gone. The walls haven't expanded any further, but the buildings are now closer together. There's more of them. But the clock tower still sits where it always was. But just beyond it is now another large set of walls. These ones housing larger buildings inside. You recognize this as where your old house used to be. It used to be right in the courtyard by the clock tower, but now there is a almost like a castle. What is happening here? Hmm. I'm going to fall back with the group. Still moving ahead. Just check in to see how they're doing. You all holding it together? Welcome to Umberdale. Interesting architecture. I agree. A lot has changed since I was here last. These structures were not what I remember. In a good way, I hope? Well, that's yet to be determined. Things change. People are not always what you think they might be. I'm here to figure that out for myself. Why do people stay here? What's, what's, what, what do they value? That's a very, very difficult thing for me to answer as one of the few people that left a long time ago because they no longer felt the need to stay. I suppose tradition. There's a kind of, a kind of pride that Umberdale and, and, and its people have. A connection to the land, a connection, this sort of strange relationship with that forest, the constantly encroaching danger of some sort, but it gives them purpose. The everyday task of having to fight back that forest is a way for the people to prove something to themselves together. I don't know. I don't know what keeps somebody here, but I expected it to be exactly as I left it, and it's not. Keep your wits about you. I may not be able to help you as much as I thought I could. How long were you gone? For half my life. What? Huh. I left as an adolescent. Did you leave on your own? Were you with others? I left alone. I left alone without looking back. My mother, I told her that I was leaving and she was not pleased. Tried to talk me out of it, of course. Sure, some of you must relate to what that must be like when your parents have different wishes for you than what you want for yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah. If the trees keep growing, why don't you just let them take over? I mean, it doesn't seem like a huge island. Unless you think that they could cross the water and, you know, start to take over. I think, personally, eventually it's going to come to that. This is as invasive as something can be. It's like a plague. A plague of the land. It is. And I kind of shoot a glance over at Xander. It is indeed. I feel like it's kind of similar to living in LA. What is LA? Oh, that's where we're from. It's another thing I'm just going to keep on the keep secret. What do you think is the plague in LA? The people. People moving in from Texas? Like... <laughs> yeah, there's so many people. 
did you just constantly have to push back against like the like mediocrity like you always have to stand out like the trees that are encroaching on you is just like the fact that there's a million other people that are trying to do the same thing you do and like trying to stand out like living in LA is like kind of toxic I think everyone knows that before they even get there yeah that's why they're the trees those trees know they're toxic and they coming in this LA place was plagued with some sort of a miasma and that drove millions of people away or towards it I can't even imagine you're exaggerating well unfortunately no like it's like it is literally millions of people going to it like every year for uh, entertainment purposes they want to be the people on the stage so to speak LA huh well sounds like a great place uh, it is great though it is there's not much nature but also nature isn't um, trying to kill everyone as you guys are all talking, Lada had gone and opened the gates to what looked like this castle. And as she walks back to you, you ready to move inside? I am, but can you tell me what I'm walking into? What is this structure? This wasn't here when I left. What is this castle? A safe haven. Plan B. Place for the Kataval to live. So my father's the Kataval. Is he ruling Umberdale? In a way. And this fortress is a last line of defense. Aye. Against the forest or against something else? The forest. And those fights have gotten worse. Your friends will see. And she gestures to the ones that are injured. The infirmaries are overrun. Let me have one word with them. And then we will enter. Make it quick. I'll approach them one more time. I apologize. I, I'm learning things moment by moment. You already understand the things that you need to keep secret. We were here together. Our supplies are gone. No matter what you see, no matter what they tell you, don't waver in your confidence, in your conviction. You were here to help, and they need it. Of course. Yes, sir. Lobos, before we go in, I'm sorry to ask, but is your father somebody that, that we can trust? Do we have to worry in any way? And what of your mother? She's here somewhere. I trust her more. I've not been in touch with them. I don't know how to answer that question. I absolutely don't think that you should be nearly as forthcoming with anybody else ever again as you have been with me. You're too trusting. That's kind of what I keep telling them. I'll I'll try to make sure of that, and I'll kind of whip Xander in the butt with my tail. Look, dude, sometimes it helps. Sometimes, you know, I'm just saying. Lada starts bringing you to the largest building in front of you. It's large. It's completely made of wood, but it doesn't look like it's here to be extravagant. As Lada enters the main doorway, it's both her and Rylar accompanying you. As she opens that main doorway, you can see she stands up more straight and walks with more of a purpose. And entering through the doors into a common area, there are people all around here. Some chatting, playing games at tables. It almost feels like a common space for anyone to enjoy. There doesn't seem to be one uniform or symbol or anything among those who work here or guards or anything. And as Lada walks down this long common room, some of these people wave at you, Lovos, with big surprised faces. Others give you stern looks or especially stern looks to the party members as you walk by. I raise my hand in acknowledgement and just kind of continue moving forward, not wanting to make a big spectacle out of it. You can see that Lada and Rylar are heading straight towards this double doorway. And when getting there, Lada knocks and enters. This room, as you guys are walking in, looks different. The wood here is all normal wood color. Dark browns with lighter browns inlaid by decent craftsmen. Area opens up quickly. It looks like a throne room, but on a small scale. From door to dais, it's about 30 feet. Upon the dais, it's not your traditional thrones facing the entrance. It's said it's a small table with four chairs around. Behind it, a fireplace, which is lit, providing a warm glow. And at this table are two people, an elven man and a human woman. The woman is starting to gray, but her light brown hair hides them well enough. Her wrinkles seem to be showing more than you remember, Lobos. This is your mother, Terry. 
Across from her, finishing a bite of some sort of leg of an animal is an elven man. He has dark hair, a single braid on each side that comes in front of his long pointed ears before the majority of that hair gets pulled back behind his head and kept in a ponytail. No facial hair whatsoever. He can grow it when he wants to, but chooses to remain clean shaven. As you all enter, Lada gives a small bow and Terry starts to get up immediately with wide eyes open staring at you, Lobos. But Edlis puts his hand up to stop her. Puts his food down and stands up from his chair. Comes down those few stairs to be standing amongst the group of you. He doesn't stand that tall, 5'8", but circles around you all. He quickly glances over the four others before doing a quick circle around Lobos. Lobos, you can see he's walking with a slight limp, something he never used to do. As he walks, he looks you up and down. Much scrawnier than I remember. When was the last time you swung a hatchet? I put my hand over his and I give it a gentle squeeze back. Welcome back, son. And he reaches for a big embrace. Not only do I accept it, but at this point, I believe my father, I don't think I knew how much smaller than me he was when I left. And not only do I hug him back, I pick him up. You're easily able to do so. You've grown a lot since you've left. Oh, oh okay. You can't be doing that when others are around. Uh, I'm sorry, father. I didn't mean to disrespect you. I let him down. You let him down as Terry comes down from the dais as well. Lobos, I'd say you haven't aged a day, but... She, like, gives you a big hug. I hug her a lot more gently. I see her looking older. It's hard to have a sense of time when you've been gone for so long, and so I, I take her in a, a, a face that is very different from the one I left. Hi, Mom. You promised letters. I know, and I'm sorry I wasn't... I wasn't able to keep in touch. It's the most relief I've ever felt, seeing your face. Something about the sound of her voice and the look on her face is hard to take in after so long. The forest is creeping in, faster than before, and you need help. You, uh, set out a call, did you not? Lobos, we have, uh, lost many. Forest gets more aggressive every day. I do have to ask, why appear from a magic ship in the sky? I thought we taught you better than that. You taught me many things, Father. But you also taught me that one should help in whatever way they can when help is needed. I was worried about my home. I heard rumors, I heard people talking about trouble here, and then I heard you put out a call for help, and I found it, and I gestured to my four companions. They offered help, um, so my manners, uh, allow, allow them to introduce themselves to you. <laughs> Friends, these are my parents. I go one at a time, gesture to, to each of them. Quickly do your introductions. I see you have injuries can get those taken care of. I'd be happy to assist them, as long as they promise no harm to the people. And if Lobos, you take responsibility for their actions. I turn to the group and I say, my father is asking you to promise, in a literal way, no harm to the people if you, if you don't mind. Pinky promise. Of course. Absolutely. I'll just take my hammer off my back and, and throw it down on the ground in front of me as a show of no ill will. I look back at my father. There you have it. Lara, Rylar, take them to the infirmary. It is quite full after yesterday, but they will make room for them. While you're there, do your best to get any other information you can out of the injured. Though don't press them, they need the rest. Lara and Rylar, do a quick bow, come over to you, Jet and Xander. I'll pick my hammer back up and kind of use it as a cane almost. And they take you back out. And then you can see there are a couple other guards that came in with you. Edlis goes, leave us. We have a meal to finish. Bring ale and wine for our guests. Come sit. And you can see he limps up those stairs. I sit across from my parents. Is there a specific spot I should sit? 
You can see he actually points to another chair in the corner. I'll get it. Don't worry, Father. No, 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 no. I, I, I immediately jump up and I go get the chair. What has happened to the council? Lobos, the council is no more. The forest has become increasingly strong. It expands further and further every day. Just yesterday was the worst it has ever been. Terrible injuries from those who are trimming. We still haven't been able to figure out what caused it, but the council. It's been four years since their disappearance. This was just when the forest was getting worse, harder to contain. Back then, it was nothing compared to today. The council decided they must put an end to the plight upon Umberdale. Council members all joined together. We had a plan to take ourselves along with our strongest people into the forest. Deep in. Find what is causing the expansion. It has to come from somewhere. You sent people into the forest to learn what might be causing whatever it is that's happening now. I would never send others. I was supposed to go that day. Just as the rest of the council, we all agreed to go. Everyone agreed to go. I would never send others. But yes, we were trying to figure out where the expansion started. The day before it happened, I was attacked by a plant creature. Creatures such as these rarely came to the edge where we trim. It surprised me. It looked like a dragonborn made of alien plant life material. It struck me and tried to pull me into the forest. I... This is why I no longer walk as upright as I once did. The council refused to push off the excursion until I was upright again. They rushed. They kept me here to watch over the citizens of Umberdale. A coward, hiding behind his injury. The council was never seen again. And your injury has... Your injury has never properly healed. No. Is it the trees that are mutating? Or you think the trees are affecting the natural life around what used to be here? I know not what lies in the forest. Only that I know the forest takes no prisoners. This, uh, dragonborn, what color was it? Looked like driftwood. It didn't speak. No. Like a skull carved from a piece of wood. I don't even know if its jaw could unhinge. Anything else I need to know? This. He looks around. This is the last refuge. Slowly walks over to the fireplace that is burning here and he moves a rug that is in front of it. And it reveals a hatch in the ground. Tunnel systems. Go straight to the docks. We have an emergency ship prepared with the necessities to get us any sort of place of refuge. Father, why stay? Why not leave with the survivors that you have? Let an army come here and fight off whatever this is. I ask myself this every day. I didn't for such a long time. It was part of life. It was how we grew strong. It was how we grew together as a community. But now, I fear that Umberdale is lost. We can no longer trim the forest and there is no stopping its expansion. It may finally be time to let this place succumb. I get up from my seat and I move around. And I, I stand in between my parents and I put a hand on each of their shoulders. I should have been here. I don't regret going out into the world. I don't regret going against your wishes. I don't regret what I've learned. I just wish that I could have it both ways. We often wish for what may not be possible. I wished for you back every day and so did your mother. Yet it was good you were gone. I know you, Lobos. That day the council went out without me, you would have tried to take my place, and you would have been lost to this world. There are blessings in every terrible moment. That is true. But perhaps not all is lost. There has to be a source in that forest. There has to be something happening in there, and, and we should try again. Is that why your friends are here? Yeah. I, 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 they're, 
we could help with that part? Or organizing for fleeing the city? I don't think after the council anyone here will offer to go into the forest themselves. It's hard enough to get volunteers to trim the edges. I don't think we would mind. If you asked us like a month ago, I wouldn't say we were really capable, but I feel like we've really grown into ourselves. But not in a toxic way, like a like a, a growing at a natural pace kind of way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you need hands, we, we all got two of them. We're going to need more than your hands, but uh, there's something special about each of you. I've seen enough of you to know that it's more than what you're physically capable of that's needed here. What are we in for tonight? Are we expecting an attack? Are we expecting some sort of an assault? We've trimmed back the thousand feet. There'll be plenty until the morning, where we will send out trimmers again. For tonight, we'll get you rooms at the Branded Axe. If your friends want to go on the excursion, the sooner the better. The forest has been terrible. Yesterday was the worst day we've ever seen. I turn to the two of you that are here. Will you help us? That's what we're here for. Wonderful. The four of you will go in the morning. Lobos, you'll stay here. No, Father, I cannot. I am going to go with them. We need someone to guide us through. So if this would be our first time venturing into the forest. We don't know our way around. We don't know where to even begin looking. Just to know, if anything, what's normal and what's not. You immediately see Terry puts her fork and knife down and just closes her eyes. Son, I have lost everyone to that forest. Lost all the council. I am in over my head trying to run a city here that I don't know how to run. And this is your first day back in a decade. I cannot lose you. I do remember more than you know. You both taught me that the people here are greater than the sum of its parts. The city needs to have one of us go in there, not just these four strangers. They need to see that our hearts are in it. They need to see your son who has been gone, who I can see from the looks of half of their faces, I can see that they regard me as someone who abandoned them. I owe it to them. Let me do something for the city that's greater than any selfish drive that led me away. <sighs> he stands up, swipes his hand across the table. <sighs> Your rooms will be ready at the Branded Axe. Thank you. We will make sure nothing happens to him. He will come home. I will send word to Lata after the others have been to the infirmary. To show them to their rooms. I stand up, give a bow, and I exit. Awkward curtsy. <laughs> Quietly do a, a little nod and run behind Lobos. Through the sending stone, you hear Xander go, Did you guys say the options line? Did you did you say you got options? I was kinda lasting out our mind at that point. I'm sorry. We're trying to build a brand here. Only you have decided on this brand. Yeah, well, I'm the hype man, so it makes sense. Let me make that decision. You got options. Thank you. Let's jump back a little bit and join Xander and Jet as Rylar and Lada begin taking you to the infirmary. They bring you out front of the large castle-like building and into the other building. Rylar opens the door. This building is long and filled with beds all along the walls. There's a bit of room between them for walking, but mostly this place is just filled with beds. Many of them occupied. Ryler shows you to a bed that's open. You don't need to lie down, so if you could just share this bed, uh, I will find someone to assist you. Don't go too far. And he goes to a doorway at the end of this room, knocks and enters from around there's sounds of pain coming from others others are completely asleep one person to your right has their leg all bundled up in bloody clothes on the table next to them is what looks to be like a crudely made dagger out of wood the same orange pink wood 
everywhere, even the blade. The person to your left has one eye completely closed, and it twitches every once in a while. Lada is still with you. She goes, The forest has gotten more aggressive. We are seeing more plant creatures attack every day. Some with new ways of attacking. Most try to drag whoever is attacked into the forest, crippling them somehow. Mostly through ways of injury. But in some cases, through attacks of the mind. And she points to I carried him back myself. A monstrosity like I had never seen. Eight foot long worm. Two large clawed arms and six, maybe eight legs scurrying it along the ground. Its face was a mouse of open mouth with layer after layer of teeth. But everything was made from plants. A, a worm made of plants? Don't think many people believe me when I tell them. I mean, we've seen some crazy stuff going on lately, so I really wouldn't put it past this world, to be honest. Xander's kind of like looking around at all of the people that are clearly in pain, including us. He quietly wants to try and send, quote unquote, send good vibes and do healing light on as many people as he can. Just like he's doing the same thing that he always did whenever he tried to heal Jet. But nothing happens and he can feel that nothing happens. Xander, give me a charisma check. 22. Xander, it doesn't feel like nothing happens. It feels like you're trying. And you feel like can't tap into that ability, but you know it's still inside you. And it's weird. You haven't felt anything close to this in a long time. And then you hear, I often thought of what happened to you. And Xander Jet, looking up, you see a familiar face. A larger, dark-skinned human woman who you have not seen since your first day in Fendrea. She's the one who helped you all and was there with you when Kingsley was taken. Nurse Joyce from Aid for All in Wooded Holly. No. Oh my god. Did you ever find Yasora? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, our, we did. We, we saved her from a giant tree full of cultists did you ever get your friend back because of your help we were able to save him oh god it's nice to see you and <laughs> i run over and give her a, a large hug you try to run it looks like you're hobbling a bit and she goes no 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 sit on the cot and she gives you like that little hug while putting you back down on the cot <laughs> <laughs> did not expect to see you again and you can see she starts assessing all of your wounds after what happened, I I left. I left there. Just just after you left, I was tired of helping the magistrate. I heard Umberdale needed assistance fighting against the wild itself. I decided to come here. The odds that we, we've met again. It's incredible. It, it, it's so nice to see a friendly face. Feel bad you are so injured and not from the forest. Uh, it's kind of a weird story. We were on our way here to help with the forest problem. That's where we got attacked. Neither of you were ever good at lying. You can see that she wraps up your injuries, puts in some packed herbs into those injuries, really pulls them tight. Jet, it really hurts. You'll be fine. Take a night's rest. You'll be able to walk just fine. You should be able to breathe just fine. Actually... I have just the thing. She walks back out into that other room and she comes back. I have uh, improved the formula. I believe you called them pep in your step. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Soda. She gives you five of them. I think that should be good for you. Uh, if you need any other help while you're in Umberdale, please let me know. Just at that moment, Lada comes back into the building, says she can take you to the branded axe to meet up with your friends. That is five greater healing potions. Ooh. Oh my god. 44 plus four. Thank you a bunch, Joyce. I apologize I don't remember your names, but good seeing you again. Probably safer for you if we keep it that way. Lada takes you over to the inn in town. It is called the Branded Axe. Lobos, you know that this inn has been here ever since you remember. You, Sebastian, and Blueberry have been here a little bit longer than the others have. 
And when Lada shows up to bring Xander and Jet, she comes right over to you, Lobos, and calls over for a drink. <sighs> they won't change the name, Lobos. I like knowing that there's something at least readily familiar. But now it's got the bad connotation. The branded axe, they brand all our axes with our names now. Wait, why do they do that? So if the axe is ever found, we know what happened to you. Of course. And they won't change the name of the one place I can get the good ale. And she brings up the mug, gestures it to the bartender. I'm bugging Blueberry while we're chilling. Lobos, I will see you tomorrow morning before you leave. Because you are going with them, correct? I am. Don't make me wait ten years for you to come back. Let's hope the forest doesn't keep me in there for that long. That was a joke. I'm sorry. Your humor has not gotten better. Uh, well, at least yet another thing that stays familiar. She leaves the inn. Okay, so Blueberry, hear me out, okay? You've been doing, like, your yoga every morning. So, like, when we get home, what do you, what do you think about, like like a guided yoga session and I can write all the music and then we can like split the money 50 50 we'll get Xander to film it he doesn't need any money it's okay would it be like pop punk no I can make it pretty like I do sometimes okay yeah but like if you want like a track slipped in there or something you know I just I don't know if it would be fun for you like I'm open to it I just don't know if it'd be the fun kind of music for you to make because it's very slow and unobtrusive and you're not really supposed to notice it i know though i've been i've been working on like being really calm and peaceful and stuff like i've been working on jet song uh that's that's pretty that's pretty nice it's real real soft and real slow i'll show it to you sometime okay i walk in as he's saying that like yeah that sounds like jet soft and slow <laughs> and sit down at the table <laughs> oh yeah how's your leg there buddy Welcome back. I'll walk in behind Xander as he's saying that and just throw the pep in your step uh, right at him. Hey, guys. Got a couple of these, and I, I throw one to everybody. Sodas for everyone. Hey. What? These look different. What is this, mango? Mine is pear and mint. I don't think that sounds like a good combination. Oh, oh God. No. no, no, it's good. Yeah, I've had a pizza with pear and mint. It's actually... What, it, what does this say? Ki Cucumber lime? Oh, Xander. <laughs> Lobos is like scratching his head while this is going on. Uh, how Have you even drank one of these before? We had our old ones. Yeah, the first batch. Do I still have my... I'm digging through my bag. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we haven't been here that long. I'm sure it's still good. Well, I mean, I, I'm a little concerned that you actually drank it slow enough to taste it. Usually you got to chug these so fast that... You don't even know what flavor it was. Oh, I chugged mine. You seem to be in better spirits, considering you just survived a crash of that kind of magnitude. Start jumping up in the air a little bit. Yeah, I feel pretty pretty spry right now. I wouldn't do that, just in case. Don't you just have a leg full of herbs right now? <laughs> it's, I'm feeling nice. I start slapping my leg a little bit. See, look at this. It's fine. No issues. Yeah, to be honest, Lobos, the, we've been here for about a month, and it feels like every single day has been an airship crash, so... Just another day. Is this what you guys go through, like, on a daily basis? Is it just mayhem and revolutions and death and murder all the time every single day? Because good God. Yeah. It's not that where you're from? No. No. Well, not on the surface. It's hidden from the public eye a lot of the time. This place you called L.A. that is a uh, filled with poison and millions of people coming or fleeing. I, I, I don't know. It sounds like you come from a place that's not that different from where we are here. No, I guess you're not. You're not wrong. I was going to say there's a lot less death, but even that's wrong. It's just not shown as much. Well, we're not like a part of it. I'd say it's easier to avoid. Yeah, if you're a part of it, you're going to be in jail for, like, most of your life. And then you just kind of live in a box for a while. Those that get caught. Yeah. A lot don't. Make sure not to get caught over here, either. It's not so fun where they send you. Hey, we got out of there, actually. I mean, sorry. Let's, anyway, what's the plan for tomorrow? <laughs> Lobos leans in. You notice a shift in the tone of his voice. He gets quieter. I get it. You're from somewhere else. Another plane. And 
My guess is that you want to go home? Precisely. Very much so. Yeah. I recognize a homesick person as one homesick person to another. I might be able to help you. If you help me. Yeah. At first light, we're going into that forest. And we're going to find out what's causing this. Okay. Is there anything else you need to know from me before we go in there? What are your your strengths? I pull out my bow. Without even looking, I notch an arrow and I loose it. And across the way, hits a bullseye. God damn! Holy, okay! Without even looking? Okay. Oh, psh, I could do that. Can I throw a dagger and try and do the same thing without looking? Give me a attack roll. Uh, uh, that is a nat one. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Which dagger are you throwing? Not the bejeweled one. Not Jacob's knife. It is the glass dagger. <laughs> All of a sudden, you see there was a waitress walking by with a tray of drinks. You throw the glass knife, and it's looking like it's going right on target as she walks right by, and it just shatters, and then there's drink everywhere, and she, like, drops the tray, and she's like, oh, no, and, like, the bar goes rowdy crazy because they're all just, like, laughing, and almost, you feel so bad for this woman right now, and there's no evidence of the throw. She just looks around, and she, like, doesn't understand. There's no dagger anywhere because it reappears in your hilt. I'm rushing forward to clean. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna leave her a big tip. <laughs> what just happened? That they, those glasses just exploded? I don't know. I thought I saw something, and then it's not. <laughs> you can see she's like visibly crying. It's okay. It's okay. Oh God! God damn it, Xander! The waitress is just trying to do her job. She walked in front of me. I'm gonna druid craft some moss to try to soak up the liquid. <laughs> <laughs> so I I say to Lobos, so that was I was just demonstrating how good your skills were with like a comparison. So why you know game recognized game? I found that to be uh, completely impressive. It had more of an effect than what I did. Okay, so you asked us. Now I guess we should ask you. Is there anything else that you need to ask of us? Any info we might have left out? I feel like we're kind of okay to talk right here, right? Should we take this to the rooms, or...? Yeah, let's leave. I'll invite everybody up to my room, so we can continue our conversation. I'll open the door, close it after everyone's inside. I'll pop a squat against the wall. As I close the door, I pop my head out one more time to kind of listen to the crowd as they're leaving. Taking in the drunken joy that was filling the inn for a moment. Close the door and turn to them and I... It's nice to know that they're allowing themselves one last moment of joy before they get back to it tomorrow. Their spirits are high for what they have ahead of them. Yeah. L.A. I need to know more about your place. You are very interested in L.A. For someone who is so far away from it. How far away from it am I? Infinitely? I don't know if it's a different point. Where you're from? Are you aware of other worlds? You seem to be so surprised. People have ideas. There's lots of conspiracies. Xander might be. I got a lot of uh, a lot of theories that I could run by you, but none of them really come close to what we've experienced so far. So you were telling me you come from a place where there are cities or countries like LA where there's millions of people in one place I mean it's pretty spread out you know and it's all, it, technically the city proper of like LA is a whole county and then the city is within LA and a lot of people that like live in LA are technically just in the county but like how many days does it take to get from one end of LA to the other Xander would know the exact amount of time because of how often he has to <laughs> yeah. not be in a car it's 17 miles on foot, so that's that's like 14 hours of walking to get from one side to the other. You have millions of people living in such a small space. This is not a country? There's some areas where people live where, like this building, say, 
were staying in the top portion of it, and then you could add another layer, and then another layer on top of that. And it continuously goes higher and higher for multiple, multiple levels. Hundreds of people in one building. They, they reach to the sky. I pull out something to write with, and I, just, I start scribbling some of what you're saying down. This is incredible. No wonder you want to go back. But there's no magic. That's a thing. I mean, I guess our version of magic is technology? So, like, electricity and stuff? But they got that here, too. Like, we met Brad. But he's magic, right? Technically? I, okay, I feel like most of our technology is kind of magic, too. Like, I, I, sure, maybe I never took physics, but, like, that shit's magic. Like, it, it's just True. Crazy. Like, tell me how a camera works and just captures a moment. Like, that's blasphemy. What is a camera? Oh, Xander. Oh, this might blow your mind. Say cheese, and I'll take a picture. I say cheese. Uh, closes his eyes, the f bright flash, seeing those like kind of weird color images as his eyes are closed. Uh, my bad, bro, but take a look, see? And I show him a picture of him. <gasps> well, this is magic. Of course it is. This is, what else would you call this? See, it, ha it has to That's be. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know how cameras work, but they've, They've been doing this for, like, t 200 years or something. Well, uh, all things to, to discuss at another time, of uh, uh, I hope, but every world has magic, whether the inhabitants are aware of it or not. If you live in a world where people are unaware of it, it just means that it's untapped. Although this right here is absolutely magic. Maybe it's true you just call it by a different name. But if you are finding magic in this world in a way that isn't what you experience there, you're not seeing what's hiding in plain sight. Or I would wager that somebody there knows and they're keeping it a secret. I do understand what he means, though, because if the magic was in us all the whole time, it just took getting teleported here to bring it out. Like, who's to say we don't have it back home? We just don't know how to access it. We came here, and look at all the shit we can do. Where did you get teleported from? Uh, our film set. I don't know what that is. Sorry, movies, like... It's like a play. Like a stage play. I'll, I'll start recording the conversation that's happening right now. It's like, imagine if we were doing a play on stage, but we used the camera to record it forever to watch it back. And then I turn that around so that you'll hear Blueberry say the exact same thing. Oh. That's like what LA's all about, really, is is movies, making thousands of those a year. Of oh, these records. These are records. Kinda. Often narrative, um, art. And tell stories. Yeah. Uh, he takes whatever he was writing on, the, the, the piece of paper, he jots down more notes. Well, there's something that I, um, well, watch this, I guess. I kneel down, and I put my hands on the floor. You certainly have contraptions and magic in your world. And as you've seen, there's many individuals here in our world that have certain special abilities. You know that there's portals to other planes. And we in this world understand that there's many, many different planes. There's a kind of energy where my palms are touching the floor. Translucent energy starts to swirl around them moves up my wrist and my arms into my chest and up into my eyes and my eyes open and they're a bright white and I'm using my planar sense I want to sense if there's a portal within a mile the only portal you feel within a mile is a portal to Fendrea in Xander's bag what? what? Oh! Oh shit! The fucking bucket! Oh, the oh, fucking bucket! Oh, of course! <laughs> Duh! Are you okay? Is that normal? That's normal for me, yes. Uh, as normal as that contraption is, in your world, yes, there's some of us that can do what I just did here. When, when what was that? I can tap into something that allows me to sense portals to other planes. Did you find any? I did, in fact, and I turned to Xander. There's one on you. A portal on you. 
leading to here, <laughs> to our world. What's in your bag? Just turn the bag upside down, and after 11 daggers fall out, then the bucket will just clatter to the ground. Oh, the bucket. I want to examine the bucket. Yo, check this out, though. I'll take one of the daggers because I have enough to lose, and I just drop it into the bucket while he's holding it. And as it hits the bottom, you see the bottom almost ripples as it goes straight through it. Xander, can you throw something a little less dangerous? Like, we don't know where that ends up. It could have been in someone's <laughs> bed. It could have been inside someone. You, you've not tried to go through this bucket yourself? Not even stick your head through it? Uh, well, we, we had that idea. It kind of doesn't fit. We Yeah, we, we discussed that. It kind of, it's, it's a little small. We were told it goes to random places every single time. We don't know if we could pull anything back or not either. One time we polymorphed someone that we didn't want to kill and we thought about putting him through, but then we didn't know where he'd end up. Well, at any rate, this bucket just takes you somewhere here. It's not a portal necessarily to another plane. Well, maybe inside the forest, as we continue to explore, I might be able to do what I just did again, and maybe there's a way home. You could be very helpful to us. You don't know how long we've been searching for somebody like you. Well, he knows about a month. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we really should get some rest. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, this this is him telling us to get the hell out of here. Oh, right. Social cues. Sorry. Sunrise? Is that the plan? Yes, first light. Okay, great. Good night. We'll meet you downstairs. Good night. It was nice meeting you. Well, wait. I guess we're gonna... That sounded like we're leaving forever. We're not leaving forever. That, that's not necessarily what that means. It makes sense. Okay. It was nice meeting you. I think I've already shut the door at this point. Lobos! <laughs> <laughs> Walking in the hallway to our rooms like, he's so nice. <laughs> what a nice man. He thinks I'm a dick now. God damn it. I'll head into your rooms, turn in for the night. Xander, when you are headed to bed, see, oh, your camera's still on. And you check that picture of Lobos. In the background of the picture, Made out in the sheets. You see it says Blightmore. And very, very, very tiny on the pillow it says Namora. You take a moment, you go to the video. You don't hear Blueberry talking. You don't hear anything else happening in the room. You hear Hmm, okay. I'm gonna have to think about if I tell them about that. Shit. It's bedtime. Sleepy sleep. Xander, you're restless before actually falling asleep. And when you fall asleep, you immediately start to dream. You see an endless ocean of gray. Small ripples on the surface, though oddly still. You look down, you're standing on a block of what looks to be ice. You can see it slowly melting underneath you. Looking ahead, you see an odd floating island atop the water. And you begin hearing noises of all kinds. Whispers, other sounds, all vocal in nature, but no words being said. And you start to slowly sink into the cold water as the ice melts more and more and can no longer hold your full weight. You again look at the island. It has these odd cliffs, no beaches or anything to get up to it. And from these cliffs, you can see waterfalls of gray that go the wrong direction. The liquid flows up from the ocean into the island. You hear that, a vision of the Witchfen Forest appears in your mind. The same oddly colored trees and plants you saw just before heading to bed. Another vision, just a moment after the first. A large spherical object with a hole in its side. The image is focused upon the opening as it comes closer to you and disappears. The sinking stops. You are able to stand on the block after you hear Blightmore. 
and you stand oddly, not knowing what's going on, for what feels like a minute before you hear knocking on your door wake you up. Uh. You got your full long rest, though you feel like you fell asleep just a moment ago. The rest of you were awake for some time. It's been dawn. Hey, hey, buddy, it's, it, it's been a couple hours. You doing okay? I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. My alarm didn't go off. I, my dog ate my homework. Um, Mind if I open the door? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Come on in. Xander, like, is, like, sitting on the edge of the bed, just, like, rubbing his eyes. You just getting up, man? Dude, it feels like I just went to sleep. Hey, whoa, 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 bud, bud. What's going on? Oh, uh-huh. Xander, your hands. Oh, I had a bad dream. It must have... Shit, I don't know, man. I think it's like an emotional response. Nightmare. Got me scared. Now my hands are all purple. You had a nightmare? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's a full-blown nightmare or if it was just, like, uncomfortable. Are you okay? Yeah, no, I, I think I'm fine. It's one of those, like, I don't know, you wake up and you feel exhausted because so much happened and... Uh, and and it's just like constant like adrenaline because you're being chased by something or like you naked in the classroom or like whatever you know it's just it's it's one of those things you know while he's explaining this i want to go over and just take a closer look at his hands as he like touches me activate disguise self to like make it look like it they just fade yeah see it's like it's an emotional response like i calm down and i'm good it's not natural man that that's my man you're turning into a dragon. You can't talk to me about natural skin right now. Okay, okay. That's besides the point, all right? I know I'm going through changes. Hey, look, I mean, I feel okay. I know something happened when that dagger hit that dude on the ship. I don't know. We came here because we had to, but we were also coming here to try and find some answers about this. So maybe we'll find something out when we, if we can get back to this town, maybe they got a library that we can check after we hit up the forest. All right, come on, get your shit. We're going downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grab my stuff and head on downstairs. You guys see Jet come down a few moments later, Xander. Hi, Sleepy Ed. You guys know that, yeah, you wanted to leave by daybreak, and Xander definitely slowed you down a little bit. Y'all could have woken me earlier. Hey, what's this in my pocket? It's, a, it's an eight. I've been waiting for my donuts too, Xander. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. And we rolled the perfect number today. We got five. Hey. Oh my gosh, you gave us one for Lobos today, too. What kind of flavor are we rocking with today? It's a maple with peanut topping. Ooh, controversial. <laughs> <laughs> Xander, from your pocket, it's a tin of cinnamon Altoids. Sick. <laughs> if you eat the whole tin... You can then use a dragon's breath as an action oh at your current God. level. <laughs> oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Before we leave the inn, I'd like to drop off uh, 10 gold for uh, with a note for the waitress. Sorry about the glasses. <laughs> if we're leaving, I'm going to find Lada. You head out of village walls can see that teams of trimmers are already out with their axes and leather armor on. The thousand feet you had seen between the forest and the walls last night looks to be less than a hundred right now. It looks like this massive forest just grew hundreds of feet in a single night. You can see the trimmers cutting down outer plants and trees. You even see some of these trimmers going for large swings with their hatchets and every once in a while you can see the plants seem to unnaturally move away from the head of their axe. Ahead, you see Lada, as well as Edlis, your father. I approach. I look to him, and I, I nod. We're ready to go. Lada, how's, how's the day's work looking? Are you able to handle it enough? We have it under control. Edlis hasn't really looked at you yet. He's actually staring at the forest line. <sighs> I cannot make you stop, Lobos, but I can fear for you while you are gone. You defied death once and came back to me. I expect the same this time. It shall be done. And we'll come back with answers. Take care of mom. When you left long ago, it was before I could give you this. 
It was mine years ago. I used to use it to sneak away from your grandfather. It helps blend in when you need to get the way. It's a small cloak. It looks like it would tie around your neck and kind of go down your back like a cape. If you move it quickly, it almost shimmers in like a camouflage. With this cloak, you can use the hide action as a bonus action, as well as you are now proficient in stealth. If you already have proficiency, you now have expertise. Hey, yo. <laughs> this is huge. <laughs> Dang. Come back to us. Thank you. Yeah, just hold his his look. Uh, we had a moment of warmth in privacy. We're in public. I don't want to erode, I guess, the demeanor that he. I feel like he has to maintain as the one remaining council member. So I, I hold. I just hold his gaze and nod. I turn to Lada as I start to step away, and I hand her an envelope that's sealed with my name on the fold. Lada, even after so many years, you're the person I know I can trust here more than anybody. I want you to hold on to this for me. And if a friend happens to find their way here looking for me by name, this is for them. If I can't give it to them myself, I would like for you to hold it for me, for them. Don't let my parents know. They'll take it from you. This is important to you? It is. Then it is important to me. See you soon. Good luck today. And I step away. Are we ready? As I'll ever be. Let's hit it. Yeah. Yeah. Is everything okay with you? I suppose as okay as a... Uh... An unexpected return home might be. We'll make sure it's not the last. Well, let's do everything we can to do exactly that. He moves closer to the group. You hear a kind of whisper escape his lips. Vines start to emerge from underneath each of you and they start to grow around your legs and wrap around you and then disappear into what looks like initially fog or rather butterflies. Whoa. What is that? As I cast Pass Without Trace on the group. Wow. Do you mind getting her as well? And I'll point behind him, and, and behind him forms a very large Pomeranian. I forgot to mention this before. Um, meet Pebbles, and I'm um, just casting Fine Steed. It looks like Pebbles, at least for now, will be able to traverse as decent as she can through this forest. As you head in, travel through this forest is weird for the most part. Lobos, not for you. You've been at least in certain portions of this forest many, many times. There are no paths. There are no signs of humanoid life at all, even just five feet past the brush line. The trees smell different than your typical like evergreen or pine trees, not in a bad way, just different. Almost like an old fabric smell with like hints of dried dirt. And as you guys are walking, who's taking the lead? I suppose I would be. I'm the one who knows the forest more. I'll just ride behind him. I'll, I'll sit behind Pebbles. I'm sitting in the back. You walk for a long time before really seeing any changes in the series, just a lot of weird trees and plants. Every once in a while, you can see some vines that move as you walk by, almost like they're alive, but the scenery is mostly motionless. Wind passes through the trees. Some of the odd branches move back and forth. And you can actually see quite far in every direction through these large tree trunks. There's not a lot of ground cover here. You continue on this westward journey and you walk through the quiet of the forest. Lobos, especially, keeping an eye out. You see through the openings between the tree trunks, a woman. She stands motionless, staring directly at you. She looks to be made completely of driftwood, bark even, 
her hair, dead leaves, and mud decaying away. It runs down her rotted skin, one eye more decayed than the other. Her neck looked like it was burnt on her right side, completely motionless. And for today, that's a wrap. Oh, oh. Mm, I don't like that. Okay. Hoo-wee. Thank you all so, so much for listening. This was such a blast. Luis, where can they find you? What do you do? All that fun, amazing stuff. Hi. So you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram. It's Luis Carrazo, C-A-R-A-Z-O. Just put my first and last name together and I'll pop up. I do film and TV and I have a couple of projects that are going to air around the corner. I have a couple of films that are in film festivals. If anyone is interested in, in learning anything about that, I post about it when those things come up and you can find me there to learn more about that stuff. Hell yeah. Awesome. We're going to grab all his links. They'll be in the description of the episode, so you don't even have to search it. You can just click that nice little blue shiny and you're there. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Thank you all so much for listening. Luis, you have to join us in a bye. We will see you in two weeks for our next episode and figuring out what is happening in the Witchfen Forest. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Suppose I would be. I'm the one who knows the forest more. I'll just ride behind him. I'll I'll sit behind Pebbles. I'm taking up the rear. I'm going to rephrase that. I'm sitting in the back. Wonderful to see those two again. Glad they made it here. Back to the injuries. Saint E. Love, you're really taking up a bed right now. Pinky toe? Coffee table? We have actual injuries here, Saint. Go home. Look at Eric 5. They currently have six less fingers than the last time I saw them. Now they are down to just two. Ebav Flo over there can't even remember his own name. Wartorn Knight can speak only in puns. It's madness. Jeski Fire is bleeding profusely over there from her left arm, and you want me to take care of your pinky toe. Leave. Here, Jeski, here's your juice. I'm sure it will help. Oh, Ash, thank God you're here. Can you please help New York with her dancititis? Yes, she gets itchy if she doesn't dance. I would just pour some flour on her and that should help things, maybe? Dubwood, Dubwood, Dubwood. How did you get your arm to bend like that? Ah, plant monster. I kind of figured. Lord Asselberg said the same, though at least he can still use his thumbs. <laughs> I am just playing. Here we go. There, all better. Now you can finally teach Isuik how to hold that hatchet and get out trimming themselves. I know they're only 12, but the earlier the better. Jeff the Milkman, I know you want to help, but you don't have any medical training. Yes, I know you are like a father to everyone here, but you just can't ask everyone to call you daddy. Why don't you head to the tavern and get a drink on me? Ah, I got word that Lexi is being rushed in. She's having a baby. Wait. No, this says she's being a baby. Another stubbed toe. Why must this happen to me? At least Forerunner wants to learn how to help people. I can give him all of the stubbed toes. I don't quite like feet. Ah, Frankie, how are you? Yes, you have told us about your day already, Frankie. No, it is not Tuesday still. You've been saying that since Tuesday. It's Sunday. Okay, dear, you you just sit tight. Jude, would you please go and run and get me a coffee? I fear it's going to be a long night.